All George, right, let's take it away. No? Let's take it away. Uh, George's from Cotomy. Cotomy's uh, kept out here in the corner, and uh, let's see what you guys are doing. Yeah, hi, I'm Jordan. I co-founded Cotomy with my partner Bruno seven years ago, and our mission is to celebrate art and technology in all of its different facets. So for the last seven years, what we've done is throw a festival that looks at uh, an angle of art and technology. This year we're exploring the concept of interface, last year it was movement, um, and so on. And um, some of the things that we've done over the last seven years um, is build projects with artists. Uh, so we've built over 50 projects, um, we've thrown over 60 events. The events are all about inspiring people through experiences, so it's a lot of interactive art installations, um, really hands-on stuff. Um, and we have like a large community that is excited about this, and it's something that I've been excited about my whole life, so it's always great to see that excitement mirrored in the public. Um, but tonight, there's a lot of questions about VR projects, and in our collective of over 200 artists, there's quite a few exploring VR. So I want to share those with you tonight. Um, and all of the projects, um, besides just you know celebrating art and technology, uh, we look to sustain it. And the city is, the landscape is changing, and art is getting pushed out, and um, there's a lot of conversation about this. We're just trying, Kodame is trying to find ways for art to flourish in the city. So by showing these projects, maybe it'll spark some ideas for ways that you can support or engage with us. So the first VR project I want to talk about is the Variety Show, which is a real-time interactive environment mixing structured improv and multiplayer gaming. So the artist that you see up here is Jasper Peterson, and he comes from a traditional theater background and is doing mixed reality live streaming in a Vive environment that's going out on Twitch. Another fun VR project that we've shown is called Data Mosh VR. And this is something like a, an altered um, experience. You can get inebriated without any alcohol or any other things. Um, and it's, you, you use a stereoscopic vision similar to Lucidcam, but then it does filters on top of it so that you can have these um, really trippy experiences. And you can control how intense it is, so that's um, a benefit. You can always like dial back a bad trip. Um, Kabibo is an artist that we were actually showing tonight, and he was doing live coding on shaders, asking people, you know, what color should we bring up, how intense do you want it, that kind of thing. Um, and he's really interested in uh, the human nature of this, and um, yeah, you can still after this go and see his work at the table and pick up a sticker. And then. Modbot 3D isn't strictly a VR project, but it's one of our art projects where we go and do 3D scanning of people, full body scans, and then all of the assets are put out under the Creative Commons. So if you go to Sketchfab and look for Kodame, you'll see hundreds of people scanned in, and these are all free to use in video games, music videos, derivative artworks, etc. And the most common question after people see all these amazing projects is, how do you engage with Kodame? So we're very flexible, and every time an organization comes to us, we ask what the need is, and we figure out the best way to address that. But three common things that happen are building projects with companies, really visionary stuff, um, exploring the edges of what's possible. Whenever you put technology in an artist's hand, they will break it and find the limits of what's possible. Um, you can sponsor spaces, uh, long-term installations at a workplace or at a conference, something like that. And then you can also have an artist come in and do a lecture, um, inspire workers, that kind of thing. Um, we've been finding that uh, when, when tech workers who don't necessarily have an appreciation for art or feel creative interface with artists and create something with them, they open up to that and start finding the value in art and in their own creativity. And I also want to mention that we are able to take this, um, non nonprofit donations through some fiscal sponsorship with Intersection for the Arts, which is a great organization and has been pushing art in San Francisco for the last 60 years. So it's great to be a part of that. Um, with a few seconds left, I want to tell you about our next event, which is coming up in June, June 15th. It's at Fort Mason, an excellent venue. It's 3D Web Fest. Um, lots of exciting art and technology happening there. You can check it out on our webpage. And that's it. 
under time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jordan. You guys are doing some great work. Who here has a question for Jordan? Come on. I nailed all the points. Everybody you nailed all the knows points. everything now. You know everything or you know nothing? <laughs> In the, yes, Sandra. Andres first. Uh, you mentioned uh, last year you did some work with movement. Um, can you, and this year, interface. Uh, can you share a little bit of some of the other topics you had from the previous years? Yeah, so um, last year we explored movement, which was a really fun one. Uh, some of the highlights from that were performance art, uh, looking at the body and how it can be augmented with additional materials and with projection. Um, we were working with aerialists. Uh, it was an excellent live program, and then we also had installations that um, encouraged people to be aware of their own movement in spaces. M one of my favorites was called Nadi, which was, at the start, it was a, a yogi performing some yoga in front of it and making really interesting, unique forms, but anybody that stepped in front of it was immediately engaged, and you could tell that they started playing with their bodies um, in the space. So. Things like that are really exciting. Um, previous to that, we had a festival called Insecure. Security is a personal interest of mine, um, DEF CON and all of that. So we had a, we, Kodame in general likes to play, and security in general is quite dark and it makes people scared. So we wanted to see if it was possible to take a playful take uh, on the concept of security. And, um, yeah, if you go on our website, it's got like the long history. My memory's not the best. You're testing me at a few years back. Okay, my question is, if we wanted to learn how to uh, leverage all this technology and art, where would we go? Codemy.com is the best place to start. Just get an idea for the scale of projects that we've worked on, and then uh, you know just reach out. I'm available to talk about it, anything you're interested in, um, even just bounce ideas around, answer any questions. Um, yeah, happy to, happy to talk about the things I'm excited about. All right, I forgot to reset the clock, but we've got like two minutes more. So, hands up high. How do you connect with artists? How do you channel to get artists to get involved? That's this, like, yeah, so it happens two ways. When something catches my eye, I'll reach out to an artist and just start a conversation, say, I love what you're doing, it's excellent. Um, I run an organization if you're interested in ever doing workshops or are interested in being available for engagements. Um, we'll make you a project page or you have an idea for a project. It can happen that way. Um, the other way is artists just coming to us. We have an open call for artists on our website and on that, uh, we just get, you know, a pretty steady stream of people that are excited to engage. And uh, every year we do the call for artists around the specific theme, and then, you know, go through all of that and figure out what comes together to really tell a story um, around, you know, this year interface and in the past whatever we were exploring. Do the artists ever want to get paid? Yes, and you know that's what we're here for is sustaining the arts. So. That's the biggest thing for us. Um, that's why we're, you know, out of our own hearts, a nonprofit, and just putting in our own hours to make all of this happen. Uh, just looking for new ways for art to flourish in the city and to keep artists active and engaged. Awesome, Jordan. Any other questions? Yes. You talk about the tech developers starting to find value in their own creativity. Mm -hmm. How do you measure that or define it? Um, I, I see it in people's faces. It's not really, it's more of a qualitative thing than a quantitative thing. We don't, after in, in lecture or anything like send out a survey and are like, are you happy? Are you more creative? Are you more productive? But um, seeing, seeing their excitement as they interact with the artists and they realize that the skills that they have in their particular problem domain um, can really flourish outside of that and um, they see they start seeing parallels between play, playing around with more artistic things. Um, that's rewarding in itself, and you can see that happening 
I liken it to a guitar player learning like even the, the very basics, like how to do a power chord. You instantly have a much greater appreciation for guitar virtuosos who can do so much more than you when you know just a little bit of what goes into a performance like that. Anybody else? Okay, good. Yeah, I think we're done. <laughs>